Hello again. Here we are to talk about JavaScript, and uh, I'm going to continue with the shopping cart here. And we've got our shopping cart. Uh, if you've been following the videos, in the last video I added this function to list the cart. And essentially this just returns an array, a unique array full of unique objects. You can follow that in the video. Um, but just the array that contains a shopping cart. So, you know, we've got functions to add items to the cart, remove items from the cart, return the cart as a list. And the last two functions that I want to do are save and load. So what are these going to do? Well, the save function is going to save the cart information to the local storage. And load cart is going to load the cart from local storage. And this is going to give us an advantage because it will allow us to um, do, you know, essentially two things. Um, it will allow us to retrieve the cart if you leave the page and come back. So if you shop on one day but you don't finish, you know, you can close the, the browser window and when you return, your shopping cart will still exist. Okay? The other thing it's going to do is it's going to allow us to pass the shopping cart around between different pages. So if you have a page where you're viewing a product and you add it to the cart and then you click a link and you go to another page, on that page it'll allow us to grab the cart information again and display it. And the thing is, you know, with JavaScript, every time you load a page, it erases all the content from the last page. So JavaScript loses its, you know, its state, right? It, it doesn't exist anymore when you go to another page. The browser just erases the JavaScript and starts from scratch. So if our shopping cart is just stored in a variable, you know, that variable is lost when we go to, when we load another page, right? So putting the cart information into local storage will um, allow it to persist across pages. So that was kind of a long talk on that, but you, you'll see how it works here. Um, Local storage is pretty easy to work with, okay? Um, essentially, it just writes some information to the browser and stores it in the, you know, with the browser. Um, local, you know, it's kind of like a cookie if you're familiar with that, okay? It's a little more, a little easier to work with and you can store a little more flexible information than a cookie. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to uncomment the save cart function, you know, this comment here, and then turn it into a function. Okay, so now this is save cart. And then what are we going to do with save cart? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it to local storage. So what I'll do is I'll say um, local storage dot set item. So with local storage with set item, you um, what you're going to do is you're going to name the item. So you'll give it a name and then you'll pass a value. Okay. So uh, how, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to make a variable called shopping cart, or at least give this a name, shopping cart, and then the value will be cart. Now, the problem here is if I save the cart, I, it, you know, it won't really translate to local storage very well. So local storage is best for strings and numbers okay and our cart happens to be like a more complex you know data structure right it's a, it's an array and then each item in the array is a is is an object right with a bunch of properties so what we're going to do with cart here is we're going to use this we're going to convert it into sort of a string describing the array and objects, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this JSON object here, okay? And JSON is, is called, stands for JavaScript Object Notation, okay? And essentially JSON is a way of writing JavaScript objects and arrays as a string, and it's a good way to pass around information. So anytime you, you know, you can always store a string, so anytime you need to pass a string around, we can use JSON to convert arrays and objects into a format that is just a string and then we can read those strings back in right so the uh, the json object here has a, a method called stringify i love that name right and essentially you just put a value here and it converts it into a string okay a json value right and for us um the cart it will will qualify right so we can say cart 
you know, JSON stringify cart, and then it'll convert it into a, a JSON string, okay? So uh, let's give this a quick test with local storage. You know, before we test this function, let's take a quick look at local storage and get a better idea. Um, let's imagine, you know, I had a variable, and I want to, or let's just imagine I want to save a value, right? I'll say st local storage set item, and I want to set like an item called, you know, like username or something, right? So I'll say username is, you know, Joe, right? And uh, this, since I just wrote it here inside my script tag, you know, it'll just save username directly to local storage when I refresh the page. So let's take a quick look at that. So here's my, my old example. And I'll refresh it, and we don't really see anything happen. Um, local storage, if you're in the console, all of these little options here do different things. Under resources you'll see that local storage exists here and you can open this up, right? And then this is the domain that we're working with. And since I'm working on a local file, you know, the domain is file. And when I click on it, you can see that in this, in this columns here, I have a column called username and the value is Joe, right? Hey, let's try that again. What if I made another, um, another variable here and I said, uh, how about age equals 33, right? I don't need to save Joe again because it's already saved, right? So we'll just replace that and then I'll refresh here. And you can see there's age 33, username is Joe, right? So you can just save simple key value pairs here. It's essentially like a variable name and a value. So how are we going to save our... Um, our shopping cart. Well, we can just call on, you know, save cart whenever we need to save the cart, right? So let me give you a couple ideas here, right? We'll want to save the cart every time we edit the cart. Okay, so if something changes in the cart, we need to save it. So I'm going to scroll up here to the top and in the function add item, I'm going to add save cart to the end here, okay? And then when I remove an item from the cart, I'm going to put save cart at the end of the function. So it's going to go right before the last curly bracket. And then maybe if we remove item from cart all, that's all the items, then we want to save the cart again. Okay, and then uh, let's try it again here. Um, yeah, I guess if we clear the cart, maybe we want to save it again, right? Uh, let's see here. You know, if we count the cart or total the cart, we probably don't need to save it at that time because we didn't actually change it. And if we list the cart, you know, we probably don't need to save it again, right? So I think we're good. Let's give that a quick test. So uh, here we go, I'll, uh, I'll go to the browser here, I'll refresh it, and you can see here shopping cart there, right? And it's got name, Apple price, right? And you can't really see the whole thing, but it's pretty much in there, right? All the, all the values, okay? So anyway, so there we go. There's, uh, um, you know, using local storage with, uh, with JavaScript, right? Um, in the next video, I'll use load cart and we'll retrieve the information from local storage. So here we're just writing information, but we can also read it, okay? So thanks for watching, and I hope that's useful and helpful for, for people. And uh, thanks again.